But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. And we are back once again with the booty. And the Beast podcast might be the final podcast of this as we are about to For go into while, labor. anyway. Yeah, we wanted to hash out a couple of these before <laughs> little baby B comes into the world. And I'm like, oh, I'm debating on when we're going to post this podcast because like, do I say his name? I think the answer is no. I think we revealed the I name. I think, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, let's just. I mean, I'm sorry. not like you and with a big trap that just lets it slip out. I accidentally told my sister the other day. So, you know, you try good. to keep things a secret and you make a pact. Like, yeah, we're not going to tell anybody, right? And then <laughs> twice now, two for two, my wife over here. First I told time, my sister both times. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, and they and say. you know what? You know, but they also say men are better at keeping secrets. So, I mean, it's definitely a. I mean, it just slipped good, out. It wasn't even like one of those things that it was like burning inside me that I needed to tell somebody. It literally just like. Slipped out. Can I use that as an excuse someday? It just slipped out. <laughs> I'd like no, to. No, you may not. Why can't no, I? No, you may hey, not. Hey, baby, sorry that it just slipped in. It just slipped in. <laughs> I was talking about out. Wow, now we. I mean, we're talking about something that's not going to happen for a good eight weeks. You can really put that oh. on my plate right now. Oh, Unbelievable. Ah, uh, part two, part two, part one. We talked about nutrition myths. Part yes. two here, we're going to talk about fitness myths, and we get this all the time. And and quite frankly, I get it a shit ton on the FI platform on people who follow a fucking TikTok influencer, an Instagram influencer, mm-hmm. or some type of Reddit form and said, like, I was told I need to do this, this, and this. I think people just overcomplicate everything, whether it's nutrition or fitness. Here it is, man. Like, we talked about nutrition, calories in, calories out. Lifting is the same shit. Like, mm-hmm. it's progressive overload is going to be a term that we use a lot on the podcast. And, and Danielle produced this show again, right? So we got the, got the notes here. No fucking clue what we're going to talk about. I'll go down the list. <laughs> but I'm going to reference progressive overload over and over and over again because that is the only way to improve, to mm-hmm. get stronger, to get, shouldn't say to get leaner because that's a combination of nutrition, but really to get stronger mm-hmm. it's, and get bigger muscles is you need progressive overload. And the definition of progressive overload is putting stress on the system in which you otherwise had not done before. So basically like maybe it's more weight. Maybe it's tempo. more reps. Maybe it's tempo. Maybe it's eliminating or reducing rest between sets. There's a lot of different ways to do it, yeah, right? Putting definitely. bands, putting chains, whatever it might be. That is how you improve. Any other fad, bullshit, fucking hiccup that you read online that doesn't fall into that realm of, of thinking, 99.8% of the time is bullshit. There might mm-hmm. be like a 0.2% that's like scientific something or another. Maybe that I haven't even heard of yet, but just, just know this shit's not hard. It's not hard. I think at, at some point, there's a lot of different ways you can do it and people get bored. Well, yeah, there's a book it's called Kama Sutra. It's a lot of <laughs> um, people get bored and they just want to try something different and do that. That's what it really comes down to, right? Is like whatever helps you stick to it, helps you continue to do it because the biggest part about fitness is it takes time to build muscle. Right. And that's what people don't recognize is they expect to see results so quickly. They want to switch it up, you know, every four weeks or six weeks in, in reality, like you don't need to be switching it up that often, right? Like that's, that's the reality. But anyway, let's dive into the myths that I found and we can kind of stem some conversation from there. We can stem some conversation. Let's go myth one. You should stretch before your workout. And this is actually kind of funny because I was actually a little shocked by this one. Well, I mean, <laughs> cause I stretch before my workouts all the time. Think right? about this. Think about FIAD class. Every time in FIAD class, third grade, fourth grade, whatever it is, they would make you stretch. You would sit there, or even even football or wrestling practice, you would put your arm across your chest. You would do, I mean, that was what you, you started with stretching. That's what everybody always thought. Mm-hmm. Science tells us otherwise. Yes, and what I found was it actually said that it is worse to do stretching when your muscles are cold. Mm-hmm. So um, instead, they have a lot of like dynamic, and I never thought about this, but like dynamic stretching. 
So like I did this in track, right? You would walk back and forth and you would do like your Frankensteins and different things like that. And that's like dynamic movements. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Frankensteins is when you put your arms out and you kick yeah, while you're the, walking. So Halloween. <laughs> you're, 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 so track and fields essentially dress up Halloween. <laughs> kind of, sure. Okay, just, just, just so we're clear. <laughs> but dynamic stretching is actually better. But they also said that if you'd rather still do the stretching, you should start with like five to ten minutes on like the bike or walking or something like that where you're warming up before you stretch the muscles. I'm an advocate of warming up by doing the lifting, which you're intending to do. So if you're doing barbell Mobility. barbell back squat, you put the barbell on your back with no mm-hmm. weight and you get the motion down, you do it that way. John Meadows, you know this, right? Leg day, he always starts by trying to get the blood flow into the legs through yep. like a seated hamstring curl, um, leg extensions, whatever it might be. So you're doing a lift in which contributes to the overall day that you're doing, whether it's leg day or whatever it might be, right? So, mm-hmm. um, for example, like the stretches that we typically do or write in the plans, um, like an over and back stretch, for example, which, which is a band. It's not necessarily, I mean, you're literally like working out your pectoral muscles when you do this. It's not yep. a stretch. You get stretched with it, but you're also working out or you're doing, you know, banded pull aparts, which is going to be a rear delt, um, you know, exercise of sorts to get you ready for the movements that you're going to do. But you're not like sitting there and touching your toes and trying to touch the ground and yep. things not of that just nature. like a static movement. Yeah. Right. Like that's kind of what we think of when we think of stretching, but like the mobility stretches is kind of what people really should start with. Yeah. And I and honestly, like I would do kind of what you said initially when I first started lifting is I'd hop on the bike for five, 10 minutes mm-hmm. of his leg day. I've since moved on and now I actually just dive right into the, to, to the lift at a low. And, and that kind of came from working with Matt Jansen a bit too, and, and working with Adam Besick and, you know, they didn't have cardio or any type of warm up necessary. Well, Adam did initially, but like Jansen, mm-hmm. for example, would say, Hey, you're going to work up to your working set. And everything before that is essentially your really warm-up, count. right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't count. It's your warm-up. Yeah. So, like, you're doing reps of this pretty good weight. That's not your working set. Your no. working set is, like, And he only had, like, ass. two working sets. Yeah. And, and it was really, like, his his workouts were way different than anything else. Oh, for sure. But he's it a, was awesome. He's a champion trainer, so who am I to yeah. question? And I you don't went with it. So If you have a coach, you don't question it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> stretching post-workout. Um, you know, obviously, that's where you would sit down in, in cool-down phase and stretch post-workout. Or maybe you do some yoga later on in the day, whatever it might be. I'm not a yogi, uh, but I know that some people do like it, yep. like you. Yep, I do. But I do. I think that. it's more relaxing than anything. God, else, I love but. Myth 2. Love Myth 2. <laughs> we, we, like, we, 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 um, you know, we, we talk a lot uh, to a lot of people about, like, this particular myth. And it's, it, it's the biggest myth in fitness. I mean, oh, like, for, for sure. It's, it's the biggest myth for in women. women. Yeah. Yes, women are definitely afraid. Okay, so myth number two. Lifting weights will bulk you up. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to bulk up. It takes work. It takes food. At times, it takes drugs. Even for men, right? Like, you have to be intentional about bulking up. It's not something you just walk into the gym and accidentally become a bulky, big, strong person. Like that's, it's not an accident, right? It doesn't happen overnight. Right. I mean, your bulk and your cuts and by intention purposes or because you can't afford the food. Now, women, like I don't want to look like a man. You are not, unless you're injecting testosterone into your thigh or into your glutes. Our bodies are not built to be that masculine muscular look, right? Like that's just not what our hormones, our build, it's just not meant to be. So when women look that way, they were very intentional and likely on something to look that way. Like obviously there are some women that have more of a tendency of like building muscle. I'm not, I'm not denying that. But with that being said, it's not something that accidentally happens. <laughs> if, you are, if you see like somebody on Instagram or TikTok and, and it's a woman and they have manly features where it's the face or maybe the voice, maybe it's body composition, I will say it, 95% of the time, if not more, they are definitely on something or they just have elevated, extremely elevated levels of testosterone naturally occurring in their body, which is typically not the case. Like mm-hmm. to get that deepening in voice, to get like the manly the facial especially. features, things yeah. of that, like it's for women. Same with men. Like, I mean, men don't, you can tell typically when men are enhanced versus not, right? Like if I just worked out without being enhanced myself, I would not look this way. I would still be lean. I would be strong, but I wouldn't be as wide. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have, my calves would still be massive because that's just, that's you know, just a genetic him. trait. And I think our children got that. Uh, so. <laughs> but I mean, like my wideness and the breadth to my back, like that just wouldn't, it wouldn't be there. And I understand that. And that's why, like, obviously when I talk to people about TRT usage, I say like, 
it's necessity for people with low testosterone. But one of the positive side effects is you're going to get bigger and mm-hmm. stronger because of if you're intentional about it. Again, I could just take testosterone and sit my lazy ass on a couch and not get bigger and okay, stronger. I do anything. But I'm intentional about getting stronger and utilizing it to the best that I possibly can. For sure. You only need to work out once or twice a week to be in shape. Well, okay, what's your definition of in shape? I think that's where we start, right? Like if mm-hmm. your definition of being in shape is just being skinny, you can eat your way to skinny. Mm-hmm. Doesn't you mean you're in shape. Your cardiovascular um, system might suck. You might you be weak as shit. Um, and again, I sh- we should also clarify this, right? Because there are certain professions that people are in in which require strength on a daily basis. If you are in blue collar manual labor like construction, you might be in shape, okay? And you might not have a gym membership. You might not even go. But for the vast majority of the population, and you're working an office job or you're working in food service or whatever it might be, two days a week is just not going to cut it. I, and what I actually have found for this specific one is that most studies that they found said that even like the health benefits that come from, you know, being active and working out and, you know, being in shape, um, you had to at least have three days. Like that was like the minimum where like walking or even the simple activities to be in shape or healthy was a minimum of three days a week. Yeah. And again, good. I'm glad you touched that because like the definition of workout also depends on what it is, right? Whether you're doing a spin class, yoga, mm-hmm. bodybuilding, Olympic lifting, whatever it might be, some type of physical activity. Maybe we should say that like minimum of three days a week of physical activity of probably 45 to an hour. Mm-hmm. like time-wise. Um, and I don't give a shit if you're out walking for an hour. Like that is physical activity that is better than being sedentary, sitting on the couch watching, you know, the Super Bowl of yep. all things. Which well, means- even like for my, like when I worked in the hospital and it was like my cardio or my cardiac patients, they talked about cardio working out, like walking activity. It was three times, three to four times a week, mm-hmm. 30 minutes. Yeah. Right. And that's the benefits of your heart. Right. So like that's, that's what I'm talking about is like that health benefit if you're only doing it two times a week, it's not enough to really get the benefits from it. Correct. So. For the last two decades, we have been the best kept secret of the supplement industry. We've kept our heads down and worked. We pioneered full label transparency and full therapeutic doses because we believe that truly hard work requires truly effective tools. Two decades is a long time to commit to one pursuit, but when you act with purpose and become centered in yourself, eventually you realize that you were born and bred for this. Things you once thought impossible, you now do every day. We don't like the easy way, it just doesn't feel right. We'll take the long, hard road over a shortcut any day. It takes longer, sure, but in the end, you know you earned it. And with the right team behind you, pushing yourself further than you've ever been will be just another afternoon doing what you love most. Adding my product is going to help you get to where you want to be. Five percenters is five percent of the people in the world that are willing to do whatever it takes to reach their goals. We're talking about business, success, education. Willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Cage was born of a need for premium 
health-focused products that actually work. We help you lift heavier, run faster, live healthier, and achieve your potential. You deserve to trust a company that doesn't cut corners, one that sources the highest quality ingredients. Welcome to Caged. Myth number four, the best timing to work out is the first thing in the morning. I don't know where this came from. It's not true. There's actually science to show that you benefit by working out later in the day. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is, and, and I, we, we defy science because we work out first thing in the morning because that's what fits with our schedule, which is the most important thing to take away here. Doesn't work out when you, you can. It. Like, just <laughs> fucking work out. However, however, science and research does, in fact, show that you will have optimal like an optimal workout later in the day because at that point you have calories within the system of your body and you're mm -hmm. going to have a workout that's fueled more by stuff. Like we work out fat. I work out fast. You, I eat, actually, you eat something, right? I eat something in the morning. I, I know this and I experience this. When I work out later in the day because maybe we have something to do early in the morning, I have significantly better workouts at 2 p.m. in the afternoon than I do at 5 a.m. in the morning mm -hmm. because I have a pool of essential amino acids in my body that's helping fuel that workout. I'm having calories and carbs and things of that nature to yep. burn to make for the energy. workout better for me. For, for energy. energy, right? So. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to go off that, if you're trying to be like optimal, then yeah. But, at the, you know, 2 p.m. in the afternoon doesn't work with my schedule. So, I'm still in the gym six, seven days a week, 5 a.m., because that works for me. And I still have pretty good fucking lists, but I know, I know, I'd probably have even better lists at 2 p.m. But you can also have shitty lifts at 2 p.m. too. If you don't come oh, to the gym sure. with the right mindset, like it doesn't fucking matter. My like optimal time when I used to have like my three day a week schedule with nursing, like I go in the mornings those days, but the best time for me to work out was always mid morning. Like mm -hmm. I love my 9, 10 a.m. workouts. I got breakfast in, I got to go work out. I'm not an evening afternoon person really. Like that's just not when I like to work out, but it, it's really up to like your schedule, like what works for you, so. All right, next one is weightlifting turns fat into muscle. I mean, not literally, no, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, like, fat, it's not like, right, you have an ice cube, an ice cube melts into water. That's not what happens to the fat. Fat does not melt into muscle, okay? You burn fat, you, your body will essentially use that as a fuel source, right? Whether you are a keto diet or not, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you're in a caloric deficit, your body needs a certain amount of calories per day, to basically survive, right? Like homeostasis, whether it's your basal metabolic rate or your total daily energy expenditure based on your input, whatever. It'll start burning fat as a source of fuel to keep you going. And thus in turn, you'll experience weight loss. Fat goes away. You build muscle, you burn fat. They do not interchange with each other. Like muscle doesn't disintegrate into fat. It's not the fat. same tissue. No. It's right? Like it's, it's not like you have fat and you change that physically into muscle at the same time. Like it just doesn't happen, right? But like- like he said, like when you have more muscle, it essentially needs more fuel to burn and use for energy and you lose the fat. So Correct. Pretty simple. I mean, it's not too complex here, people. Just think about that one. Uh, puzzles and games are the best brain workout around. I don't know about <laughs> where this one came from, but okay. It was on the list. It was all together. But um, they actually have tons of studies that show that aerobic exercise and exercise in general is actually better for your brain than puzzles and different things like that. I, I mean, you're, that was super it, interesting. you right? You you runners can experience this the dopamine high or the runners high, mm -hmm. right? Like the release of that. So for sure, um, and it's also like. My God, like when you run, I'm just using that as an example because I fucking hate it. But when you run for an extended period of time and distance, like it takes a lot of mental fortitude to fucking do that, which I mean, to me would be strengthening that your brain muscle, if that yep, even is a thing, sure. right? Versus like trying to figure out like, hey, what piece goes here or a Sudoku puzzle? Like, well, no, right? I mean, that being said, I'm not going to go run six to 10 miles to become smarter. <laughs> I'm good with where I'm at. However, I definitely see how this is an absolute truth in terms of like anaerobic exercising and aerobic exercise and any of that type of stuff is going to be better for brain health than just trying to figure out some sort of complex puzzle. Yeah, I thought it was cool. It was like a Harvard Medical School um, study and it actually said it was like better. It's not just for your head. It's for your heart. It's both. But anyway, very cool. Um, exercise is the best way to lose weight. It's a tool to lose weight, right? I, I, the, the biggest, and we hear it all the time, and you see the graphic of the iceberg, like 90% diet, 
10% workout. It's true because, again, the only way to lose weight is to be in a caloric deficit. How do you get there? Eat less and increase activity level, right? So if you Mm -hmm. increase your activity level, your body demands more caloric intake to maintain a level of homeostasis. If you're not eating to maintain that caloric intake level at a homeostasis level, then you're in a deficit, therefore you're losing weight. So the best way to Mm -hmm. lose weight always is going to be proper nutrition and diet. Yep. Workout's a tool. And I think the big thing that they were getting to is also like people can't just simply work off what you're eating, right? Like a lot of women will be like, oh, you, well, you mean I you, ate. Yeah, you never got on the Stairmaster and saw the little calorie thing go up? Like, I just ate off a pint of Ben and Jerry's? Oh, yeah. I fucking They, they do like it. a compensation thing, right? Like they think, oh, I had this bad food last night, so I should go run X amount of miles to make up for it. Like it just doesn't work that way, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's a balance, but also like, yes, you should exercise if you're trying to lose weight, but it more so comes down to nutrition, add exercise in to hopefully gain muscle and other things like that. At the same right, time. right, exactly. Um, it takes at least two weeks to get out of shape. Okay, so I have an issue with this one. I'll let you go first and then we'll talk. <laughs> so I actually was a little surprised by this too because I, I'm, we both have this. Like if you take a week off, like, Essentially, depending on how long you've worked out, you shouldn't really lose much strength or anything like that. In fact, it can help mm-hmm. in a lot like of you times. May need, you may need the recovery time, right? But that's also where um, the, like, the active rest days come in. Mm-hmm. And I am a big fan of like, you know, deloading week. But also, if you are going to take rest days, which is totally fine, you should still be active in some way, right? Like do a walk, like a walk or something that where you're still... <laughs> moving and doing something um but they actually had studies that showed that after a week that you do lose some muscle mass which is very interesting a lot of different factors right yes. uh, on this your your diet being a massive key factor oh, in sure. this right whether you're on drugs you're not on drugs that also plays a part in this but it, it so <laughs> yeah. like but i also don't want people listening to this podcast like oh my god i'm gonna lose my shit in a week no fucking go enjoy your week vacation like go do oh, it yes you know we're, we're active on vacation when we go to like an all-inclusive a couple of years ago we worked out every day but that's just because we I enjoy need, doing that i was gonna say i need that for like my mental health like i feel better when yeah, I work she's out. fucking crazy so we insane. need <laughs> to get there and go in the gym but i'm saying like yeah. you know there are times like we go to a country music festival we're there for five days we don't work out we mm-hmm. we we eat whatever we want within reason we you know, for, for me, I drink my face off. For her, she's been pregnant for so, so many times, it seems like. <laughs> I'm frustrated. Um, but, things. like, be okay with t- taking a week off. You know, you're not going to, like, we get the question, too, on Fitness Horse. Like, am I going to lose all my gains? No, you're not going to lose your fucking gains in a week. Like, and so just. But also know that if you're doing it over and over yeah, and over again. if you take a week, again, work off for two days, at, a week. like, there's a lot of people that will make excuses over and over again or have things going on over and over again and take off time, repair. Like, if you're doing this every month then yes, expect that your gains or like your well, you're taking progress off a year. Is, Yeah, exactly. So like with caution, right? Like if you're taking your vacation once every few months, please take your time off, right? Like I'm not saying not to do that, but um, obviously like if you're asking me if you can take a week off every two, three weeks, like it's, it's gonna mm-hmm. obviously have an impact. If I have to answer one more fucking question about if you're going to lose gains in a week or not by not working out, I'll <laughs> lose my shit. You probably, it's more of a mental thing at that point, right? Like you, you feel crappy because you're so used to that like high from lifting and feeling good and the, the pumps and all those things that go along with working out. Like when you take a full week off, it, a lot of people that are used to working out often feel crappy because they're just so used to that activity. Oh, myth nine. <laughs> I, mean, Ryan, I knew Ryan would hate that. We don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this because it's stupid. Running a marathon is the ideal way to get fit. Running a marathon is one of the most unhealthy things you can do as a person. <laughs> That's a fact. I'm not trying to be mean. I didn't make that one up. I'm not I trying did to be not rude. Write these. <laughs> no human being is supposed to run 26.2 miles. None. No. It's not good on your shins. It's not good on your calves. It's not good on your body. Like, the human body is not designed to be at a certain level of big. The human body is not designed to be at a certain level of small. And the human body is not designed to run fucking 26.2 miles away from absolutely nothing into absolutely nothing for, for no other reason than saying, I did it. Mm-hmm. Now, if the wear you can- The tear that goes into it is more harmful than anything, really. With all that being said, if you can run 26.2 miles, 
fucking kudos to you because I can't. I think it's impressive. It's a mental I think game. it's absolutely impressive. So when I say it's it, it's unhealthy, I'm not saying I'm not impressed by these people. I'm super impressed. I'm super impressed by bodybuilders who are fucking 325 pounds, five foot eight. You shouldn't be that big, but I'm impressed. <laughs> you shouldn't be running 26 miles. But I'm impressed. Okay, there are things that people can do that I fucking can't do that I'm very impressed with, but I'm not going to come out here and say, that's the best thing for you. Any extreme, right? Like, and, I, and obviously 26 miles is not as extreme as some people. Like, there's the ultra marathoners that I think of that I'm just like, how, right? Like, they're running like hundreds of miles. Like, it is insane. Mm-hmm. But when you get to the extremes of any direction, right? Like, you're talking about bodybuilding, running, whatever it may be. You are increasing your risk of injury. You're increasing your risk of, you know, like when you're doing any repetitive movement to that extent, you're going to have an injury at some point. Like it's just like going to happen, mm-hmm. right? So I would never ever in a million years say that this is the most ideal way of getting healthy. Most people who are runners like that, they do it because they love it. They don't do it because they think they're getting healthier. <laughs> so... Love it. Uh, keep a food diary as a re- reliable way of monitoring and controlling what you eat. I guess, I mean, what does it mean by food diary versus logging your food in like chronometer? I think it's the same thing. Um, well, I mean, just logging it is one thing, right? But like yeah. you have to know why you're logging it and what your goals what your are, goal right? Is, like if yeah. you're just logging it to log it, who gives a fuck? I can eat 4,000 calories and log it. It doesn't mean I'm losing weight. But if I know that based on my calculations and scientific whatever, mm-hmm. that I need 3,200 calories and this much protein and this much fat and this much carbs, then the logging part becomes super important. But if you're just logging, just say, look back at the day and be like, here's what I ate today. It's not going to help you lose or gain weight unless you know where you're supposed to be. Unless you're consistently doing it as well. I think, I think their point of this was like, okay, when you try to log what you have ate, you're going to be more conscious of what you're eating. And most people will either over calculate how active they're being or under calculate what they normally typically eat is what they were kind of getting to is that the fact that like when you're being conscious and aware of what you're eating you're going to control it more than like if you were just eating on a daily basis right right but uh so the final myth and then we have a couple bullet points here as we wrap up the podcast it'll be a shorter one today because we just are getting ready for you know baby to come Mm -hmm. into the world. Women need a different workout plan than men. Women don't need anything different than men at all. The only thing women need differently than men is any type of hormonal supplements. That is it. Pre-workout. This is actually one of my favorite things that I like. So when I first got into lifting, I thought that there was a very specified like women's side versus men's side. Right. And like when I met Ryan, one of the big things that he was very big on is pre-workouts don't need to be specified for women or men you know, like the supplements, the, all of these things and workout plans don't really need to vary either, but zero, most, most women. And especially when you first get into it, assume that we can't have the same thing as men. <laughs> so there's no reason you can't dumbbell bench press. There's no reason you can't back squat. There's no reason you can't deadlift. Like it's mm-hmm. stupid to think otherwise. I mean, women the only in- difference is going to be probably the amount of weight that you can do, but like the, oh, yeah. the exercises themselves are going to be, you can do the exact same thing. So we work out together. We do the exact same thing all the time. I mean, yep. it's any, any time that they say, well, you're a woman, so you should, you need to do this. You, if you're a woman and you hear that, you look them in the face and you tell them to go fuck themselves. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Because if I said that to a woman, I would expect her to tell me to go fuck myself. And then I would let them know that I'm unable to do so because God did not gift me with a <laughs> tool to be able to do the thing you just want me to do. Okay. Yes. So, and then under that, we have women should lift lower weights and do higher repetitions than men. No. And that's and that goes to the same thing. Goal but, plan specific. Yep, exactly. And I think women a lot of times think that they need to do like the higher reps and that's how you tone and like don't get that bulky look. But like that's definitely not true. No. And then just a couple of spot things here as we finish up the podcast here. Um, reduce fat in one area, basically targeting fat doesn't happen. So I don't give a fuck if you're wearing a waist trainer or if you're using like a, a, a vaso or a topical. Or yeah. like you're doing a million, you know, crunches for your abs or whatever it may be. Like it's, you you aren't going to lose weight in your stomach because Correct. you have that. Fasted right? cardio, lose more fat. Science says no, not the case. I do fasted cardio because I feel better without mm-hmm. food in my system. But like sure. over the course of an eight hour period or a 12 hour period a day, like you essentially doesn't matter. Does not fucking matter. Um, Eat only egg whites and not the yolks. In fact, I think it's counterintuitive, according to like some of the coaches that we've had. It messes mm-hmm. with 
some of your stomach. Yeah, GI uh, issues actually come with if you have too many egg whites. Plus, the yolks obviously are the nutritious part of the egg. There's well, I think a lot of people back in, the, especially back in the day, thought that like the yolks is where all the cholesterol was. Mm-hmm. So if you have high cholesterol, you shouldn't have eggs. The, yo- the yolk is definitely where the fats are. Yes. Right? Which, I mean, for sure. So but if you're like, trying to cut fats. If you have a high cholesterol, like cutting out eggs is not the answer. No. That's not how you're going to improve that. Shakes are great for weight loss. If you're an Herbalife rep, that's what you tell people, right? You replace <laughs> real food with uh, metal infested shake. Um, shakes are great for weight loss if the shit, here, they're not great, but I'm going to tell you this. Shakes can lead to weight loss if the total calories of that shake is less than the meal in which you are replacing. Then you're going to lose weight. Not telling you that's healthy because it's not. So if you're on one of those diets and saying, well, I have to drink two shakes a day and not eat these meals, you should just, you know, stop. I think, yeah, we've talked about that as the extreme decrease in calories due to shakes replacing real meals. So I think the, the moral of all this stuff when it comes to nutrition or it comes to the fitness and working out is, again, let's not overcomplicate what's been true since the beginning of mankind, mm-hmm. right? Like, you get stronger by being physically active. You can burn calories by being physically active. You can have proper weight management with physical activity as well as, and more importantly, your nutrition and diet plan. That's mm-hmm. it. At the end of the day, calories in, calories out. If you want to put weight on, become stronger. Typically, you need to be in a surplus. If you want to cut, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to become weaker. You'd be in a caloric deficit. Plenty of different ways to manipulate that to get to where you want to be. You can incorporate certain things that, you know, we would, you know, either tend to agree with or recommend versus ones that you probably shouldn't do um, that some of us still do anyway. Yep. But I think the biggest thing is like so many people just complicate the process when they don't need to. Well, they, I think the biggest, well, they complicate it, but they also just don't get it given enough time. Oh yeah. That's the big thing, right? Like I, I think one of my favorite, one of my highlights of being a coach at all so far was when obviously most women come to you wanting to lose weight, most people in general, right? But like one of my clients, we had probably eight months of losing weight after she had two kids and she came back to me after three months and instead of saying, hey, I'm coming back to lose more weight, her goal changed to gain muscle, right? Like to gain and realizing that like while you're gaining muscle, you aren't going to lose weight at the same time. But she came to me, knowing that and wanting to switch her goal and she had maintained keeping that weight off and switching to gaining muscle. So like just seeing that change is just the coolest thing. Right. But like, like you said, losing weight, gaining muscle, like they're different goals, different goals. So if you like what you heard here on the podcast, hit that subscribe button. You can tune into the podcast, Bleeding the beast, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, fitnessinformant.com is the website. Fitbutters.com is our food company. Make sure you check it out. Leave us a review, help out the algorithm Uh, until next time. We'll be a family of five. Let's go. Let's go.